So dear friends, another opportunity for me to speak to you in the middle of this month and surely November month as I said earlier is a beautiful month. Perhaps the rains will come to an end and we'll have that cool breeze that takes us to the Christmas time. Let me begin with the message of the week. We have a beautiful message. A message about waiting. Waiting. You know what is waiting? Waiting is not just sitting in the parlor, sitting outside to wait somebody. Perhaps it's waiting, yes. But one of the beautiful messages that God gives in today's gospel about waiting itself. You know, our life is much about waiting. A saga of waiting. We have to wait and wait and look forward to so many times. There's this mother who waits for the birth of the child. She's there waiting for perhaps nine months. The whole family is waiting. And when the child is born, the mother and father so lovingly look at the child to waiting to grow, grow up. Even a small thing, a small perhaps a smile of the child brights the whole day. We are waiting for it to grow up. And when the children are growing up, the parents are also happy. How many mothers are waiting for their children to come back from school? And if it's a little delayed, how agitated they are. How many of the family members are waiting for their husbands? And perhaps this is in small instances, in bigger instances, those who have gone to work far away abroad. You know, the parents are waiting. Perhaps the family is waiting for the father. And so this, what is the meaning of waiting? It's very meaningful. You know, it can be an idle wait. You just waste time. You glance and... Secondly, we say an expectant wait. You are expecting someone. You are expecting something to happen. And therefore you wait for it. And thirdly, a waiting that is surely is productive or useful for us. The Gospel, in the Gospel today, the Jesus gives beautiful parable of this ten virgins. You know, the Israelites had their custom that a marriage was a great celebration and they did it just not just one day, perhaps many days together. And finally, perhaps at that final ceremony, when the bridegroom came, he was to be welcomed and the people were waiting for him and especially what we call the bridesmaid or perhaps even the bridesmen that were waiting. So in this gospel, there are these ten bridesmaids, virgins, that were waiting for the arrival of the bridegroom. And as a sign and symbol of their welcome, they had to light their lamps. Light their lamps. And so all of them had brought the lamps, of course, but then five of them were prepared in case our waiting goes longer, perhaps the lamps may not last longer and therefore they had brought the oil and the five had not brought the oil. So Jesus makes a beautiful sort of comparison about these two sets of virgins, the ones who have brought the oil and they are prepared to wait and the other ones, he calls them foolish virgins. They brought their lamps but then they didn't think it sort of good enough to carry also an extra oil that would have been useful in case the bridegroom was delayed and that's what happened to him. They went out, they had to go out to bring the oil and by the time they returned, the door was closed and the bridegroom and the others don't open the door for them. Perhaps that's the meaning for us. That we also have to, first of all, our weight should not be an idle weight, a wasteful weight, a destructive weight. We also wait and plan perhaps some bad things. I will do this. I will wait for him. I will wait for her. It's a negative or perhaps a destructive type of wait. 
The second one we say is the expecting, expectant wait. You know, you wait for something to happen and it's a long wait and if you really want that thing, particular thing or person, you have to wait. You know, I had to wait once in Istanbul airport, 24 hours for the next flight. Our flight that came from the Holy Land to Istanbul, it was delayed by a few minutes, but the next flight didn't wait and just went off. Fortunately, they transfer our tickets to the next day, but where? 24 hours in the airport, just sitting there, just sitting there. And so you have so many instances of the expectant wait. And the third is a wait that is prepared, that you prepare yourself that you prepare for the, to welcome the person or perhaps something else. And therefore, this is the type, way that we have to wait. And spiritually also, perhaps we can also say that this wait has meaning because, you know, the, the oil or the lamp has got a meaning in the scriptures. It's a lamp of faith. And a newly child is baptized, a, a lamp is lit, a candle is lit, the presence of Christ. And so this lamp is a meaning that we are nurturing the faith. And what is oil? Oil is for charity. Something that flows, something that is given extra, something that is given more in order to make ourselves more comfortable. So therefore, oil is for charity. And the waiting, of course, perhaps might be a little irritating, but it can be considered going extra. You know, these ten virgins, perhaps they didn't just come there. They may have something to do with the bridegroom or their family. Some benefit that they have received, some perhaps out of gratitude they have come and they are ready to wait. They are, we are not told that they are grumbling. They are waiting and therefore, if you, the person that is coming, if the cause is useful for you, you don't mind waiting. You don't mind waiting for an extra, a little extra. You know, Jesus has that in the gospel, what we call the walk, the extra mile. The extra mile. And, uh, you know, the young man in the gospel of Mark, who comes to ask Jesus, what shall I do? And he rattles what he has done so far. And Jesus asked him, do a little more. Go and sell all that you have, a little extra, a little extra. And therefore also in the forgiveness of sins, also a little extra. So therefore, this waiting is always for little extra that we can show in our life. You know, the second reading and the first reading also are very meaningful. This waiting or perhaps the philosophy of waiting is expressed beautifully in the first reading that speaks about wisdom. From the book of wisdom itself, and wisdom is personified as a, of a lady and the meaning is just as we have to wait, the wisdom to wait and therefore this, is a, this wisdom is hidden and in plain sight for those who seek for it. At the same time, in genuine terms, entering into a love relationship. You know, we wait for a person that you love. You, we, we, you wait for a person or perhaps a cause that is dear to you. So this is the meaning of the, of the book of wisdom that speaks about our waiting, our patience, our love offering to the other. And the second letter to Thessalonians and Paul has a very powerful message. You know, waiting for death. Waiting for death. You know, once, many a times it has happened to me when I visit the old age homes, the senior citizens, they are waiting. They are waiting for those last moments. Because there's nothing else for them to do. So they think. Sometimes when the children have abandoned them, and the other things don't work, they're just waiting. And so St. Paul tells in the Thessalonians that our waiting for death is not a waste. And the death itself has meaning because it's an area of hope for us. Death is not the end. 
that is always a pointer to the hope and so you may not have another opportunity as this waiting 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 for death but also hopefully just saint paul said just as jesus died and rose again and through jesus god will bring with him all those who have fallen asleep it's a hope for us a hope for those who are waiting month of november is a month that we pray for our departed they've already gone but we said that perhaps if they are in the purgatory in a state where they were not perfect and therefore they have to pray they have to be prayed for perhaps our waiting our praying our sacrifices may also help them to have a better future in heaven and at the same time our waiting in this world our old parents our children who are growing up ah wives and husbands who are li- living a family life for many many years with so much of waiting in between may it not be a waste may it be a fruitful a time of blessing a time of waiting may it be a time of blessing and grace for all of us dear friends i now take you to a feast of our hindu brothers and sisters i think you have guessed it well what we call the deepavali the feast of lights the short form for deepavali is of course diwali and we also say that this feast is very meaningful for us also for christians because we believe as i just as i told you about the gospel of the 10 virgins who carried their lamps the lamps the lights have a lot of meaning for us it's a symbol of god's presence among us because we always contrast or rather make a difference between light and darkness and this light also represents the truth apart from falsehood good apart from evil and surely life apart from death so therefore it is my duty on behalf of all the christians of this archdiocese to wish our hindu brothers and sisters a very happy deepavali it's not only me the holy see the dicastery for inter religious commission or dicastery also sends a message every year and this year also a beautiful message has been sent on behalf of the holy father pope francis to all the hindus wishing them a happy diwali at the same time asking them to join for peace you know peace is a something that we are hungering today in our own country in manipur we are hearing day after day of so many killings so much hatred so much perhaps violence that is going place abroad we know in ukraine and israelite palestines hamas so much of tensions are there and therefore we pray for peace and uh, deepavali is a good occasion for us to not only to join our hindu brothers and sisters in their joy but also to pray for peace in the world in the west thing about you know i also sometimes go and meet our hindu brothers and sisters at the feast like the pavali and once i asked a family what is the best thing about the pavali i thought they would tell me crackers or perhaps lights and decorations you know the mother of the house told me the best thing about the pavali is all of us coming together the whole family comes together from somewhere here and there and we sit and talk and we eat sweets of course and deepavali is the family coming together and this is what we need perhaps to be also and so we will surely be with our hindu brothers and sisters in their joy especially in this troubled times 
I make a small reference, you know, this year is the 60th anniversary of an encyclical that was brought about by Pope John the 23rd. And the encyclical was called Pacem in Terris. In Latin, Pacem in Terris means peace in the lands, peace on earth. And so this is the 60th year, perhaps very, very prophetic of that Holy Father, Pope John 23rd, to say that. We all long for peace. So therefore, as we wish our Hindu brothers and sisters at this feast, let us also pray for peace among us. I now speak to you about a lady convention or lady meeting, national lady meeting that is to, going to take place in Goa. Hundreds of delegates from all over India, the lay leaders will be meeting there. And I also, since I am the the chairman of the commission, CCBI commission of the laity. I also am going there, along with many of our Bangalore delegates. I am told there will be more than 100 delegates from all over India, and the deliberations will be inaugurated by His Eminence Cardinal Philip Neri Ferram of Goa. Um, besides, there will be many other talks and deliberations, and the theme of the laity meeting is the role of the laity in the post-synodal Indian Church. As you know, we are in the discussion about the synod. And the synod, in just one or two words, if you can say it, it's going out to the people and listening to the people. And so in this listening atmosphere, we have seen the beautiful photographs of the, of the synod, where it was not a lecture type, but they were sitting around the table, listening to each other, talking to each other, agreeing or perhaps disagreeing with each other, but that's the synod. And so the church in India is also has to absorb this synodal spirit and we are starting with the laity. There are other topics also that will be discussed. For example, the lay perspective of the church today. What do the lay people think of the church today? The situation of the Christians in India today. At the same time, what is the response or responsibility of the lady in order to respond to the challenges that are going today. And there's a particular model that is going to be used, what's called the UCAT or DOCAT model. The UCAT and DOCAT model is especially geared for the youth or the upcoming lady from among the youth or the young people. And this is making use of the faith, the circumstances, at the same time, the participation of the lady. The Dukat also is the same, but what we can do, what we can perhaps exercise, what, how we can do. So, for example, we have been speaking these days about what's called the elect, election consciousness, that every one of us has to vote. And it's not only the, the general voting as such that might come next year, but also the local level votings. Perhaps, you know, just now in Karnataka, we're going to have the graduate constituency and the teachers' constituency, so participating in these elections, at the same time being responsible of the human rights situations and responding, that's the part of the lady. And I will surely be there and I am sure that it's going to have a good impact because there are many speakers, there are many participants and there will be a lot of interactions in this. Please pray for the success of this lady convention CCBI organized at Goa. It's called St. Joseph Center Goa, St. Joseph Vaz Center Goa on the 11th and 12th of November. 14th November. I don't have to say for what it is important. Everyone will smile because it's the Children's Day. We in India are very happy to celebrate this day. From many years we have been celebrating it in the memory of our past Chief Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, a man who was always smiling, who was surrounded by children and who loved children. And so 14th of November is kept up as a Children's Day. And for us also it would be very useful to celebrate the Children's Day. You know, the children are always a bundle of joy a bundle of happiness, something that comes out from them. They have nothing to hide. Even their small fights are just sort of, they are chicken fights like, they just forget about it. 
and they easily say sorry they easily combine with each other easily forgive each other so we adults have to learn much from the children you know the holy father on the 6th of november met i think about 7500 children in vatican come from 84 countries they were brought together and you know what was the theme let us learn from the children normally we say the children should learn from us the children should learn from the adults but the holy father says let us learn from the children the boys and girls and he was so spontaneous he allowed them to ask questions he himself spoke to them and he said this let us learn from the children there are two things that we have to learn from the children number one is the joy the joy of the children and we have to see to it that the children are always joyful this is the age for them the age of innocence the age of joy and the second one is the, the holy father says we have to learn from them is simplicity is simplicity and spontaneity we don't have to hide many things you know as as we become adults we go on masking ourselves we go on hiding ourselves behind certain things and we ourselves are not sincere we have to cover up we have to make up we have to give so many explanations but the children are spontaneous they are very simple we have to learn from them and so i wish all the children especially the children in our rash diocese a very happy day to you as you celebrate the children's day on 14th of november i now take you to as we have the children on our topic i take you to what's called the altar service assembly altar service you know who are the altar servers the boys and girls who serve at the altar you know i have always said that it's a great opportunity and children of that age to be at the, in the sanctuary to be close to the altar to be close to jesus perhaps you know i have always said that the, it can't be a better opportunity for the children to be closer to the church than to encourage them to be altar servers at the altar and also at other things so therefore the archdiocese is like in the two years along with the st peter's seminary fathers and the professors organize what's called an altar service assembly on 19th of november 2023 19th of november that's the next sunday and therefore the parish priests kindly send your forms of the children from each parish the parents also perhaps you can accompany some of them to the seminary to have a look at the beautiful grounds and the beautiful atmosphere at the st peter seminary at the same time whole day to spend time with joy celebrating and also listening to the fathers when they speak about how to serve at the altar how to be close at the at the altar you know i just found a small quotation of pope john paul the second who once addressed the altar service and he told them your commitment to the altar is not only a duty but a great honor and a genuine holy service a genuine holy service so the altar servers have a great perhaps not only an ideal they have a great patron also you know who is the patron of the altar servers john berkmans he was a young man and died at the age of 24 but they say from the age of 7 he was restless to go to the church he wanted to serve the mass at the age of 7 and his father accompanied him in the beginning and not just one mass you know in the olden days before the vatican council many masses were said at different altars different fathers so he per day at least three or four masses he served of those fathers and before he went home and he was always happy he joined to become a jesuit and even in the the novitiate and the others he was one of the bright ones very holy ones unfortunately age of 22 he had some sickness pneumonia and at the age of 25 he died but today he is the patron of the altar service a beautiful example a beautiful model so my dear altar servers get ready to go to st peter's 
And the next Sunday, in big numbers from your parish, perhaps you will be asked to bring your clothes. I do not know how the organizers have told you, but go there joyfully and come back happily. I always say remotely, I don't want to bind you, but the Altar Service Association is a nursery for future vocations, both for priests and for the girls to be sisters also. Maybe when you are close to the altar, when you look at Jesus on the altar, when you experience that silence, perhaps God will speak to you if He has chosen you to be His representative in the church and society. There is something else that perhaps I would like to tell you today. You know what's called the Bible ministry. The Bible ministry. And the Bible ministry is always a special ministry. And our Archdiocese is blessed with a special Bible commission headed by Mr. Virginia Rajkumari, who has holds a doctorate in Biblical theology and she has done the scriptural studies also. She lectures in many of the institutions here. But we were fortunate to get her to head this commission, which is doing a lot of work. You have heard of the Bible Marathon. You have heard of the Bible readings. You have heard of the Bible posters, the Bible reading among the children. You know, two weeks back I was there for a function of the children and I was so happy to see small thoughts like this, taking pleasure to say, taking pride to say that we read the Bible. And there was a small girl who came and read, you know, speech was beautiful to read the Bible. And I can understand if these kind of children are sort of encouraged at this age, they will not only read the Bible, they will grow with the Bible. The Bible culture will get into their veins and perhaps in the blood as such. You know, many of us have reached the Bible or perhaps started reading the Bible when we were a little older, little perhaps aged also. But to begin with children is something special. And so the Bible Commission has come out with two different proposals or rather two different projects which are beautiful. The first one is the Bible in animated form, you know animation. I don't say cartoon like but figures that can be recognized. Some many nowadays many of our children are addicted to this reading of cartoons. And not only the children, the seniors also, the parents, I also like sometimes enjoy these caricatures and figures that are drawn in different this one. And so the Bible has been brought out in what we call animated form with a language sort of either the what we call the subtitles are spoken also in Kannada, Tamil and English. And this Catholic animated series presents to us visual narrative of the Old Testament and also the New Testament. It's designed for people of all ages, not only for children. And therefore, for the family, it's a beautiful experience to open it and to sort of try to identify who is this, what is this, what is written here. And the whole family can enjoy this animated reading of the Bible and David, this will also bring the family members together. So this is the first animation, Bible in animation form that has been started in our diocese. It's already in the use from 26th of October, last month itself. The second proposal or project that is going to take place shortly is what's called the Bible Quiz. The online Bible quiz for the family, which means the questions will be given earlier. Perhaps on the online, they might be asked and many families will participate, of course, and those who are successful will go higher and higher. And the finals of this Bible quiz will be on the 21st of January 2024. You have heard of Kaun Manega Karodpati. All of us were glued to it to see what are the questions, answers. I do not know how this Bible quiz will be conducted, but I am sure it's going to be interesting. At the same time, useful for us, the Bible quiz to understand the deeper meaning of the, some of the characters of the Bible, some of the sayings of the Bible. And the Bible reading of Bible quiz is not just like the other quizzes. That the quiz that questions you, quizzes your life, 
there are certain perhaps questions that in the bible that may come about that they will sort of open a new vista for you and therefore it's not only a functional to get a prize to get at this one i am told of in the finals there will be a lot of prizes but not for the sake of prize alone i would request you to participate in this online bible quiz which will start shortly on the bible episodes with the final on 21st of january 2024 so my dear brothers and sisters i wish you well this week god bless you as i said the beautiful message of waiting just meditate you when you wait and wait why am i waiting for whom i am waiting what is my interest and perhaps god will speak to you more in silence as you wait rather than in speech and gossip and the other things that we enjoy doing let us also wait for the lord to speak to us speak lord your servant is listening the shepherd's voice which is being presented by our beloved archbishop most reverend dr peter machado the archbishop of bangalore who takes so much of interest and concern in order to bring the various topics the contextual aspects in order to inform educate and catechize all of us the priests the religious and faithful of this vast archdiocese and i'm sure you are enjoying this uh, program shepherd's voice and i request each one of you to share with your other colleagues friends and family and relatives near and dear ones so that everyone in this archdiocese can be more closer to listen to the archbishop on this shepherd's voice the weekly feature my dear friends as i have always told that this is a wonderful platform wherein we can connect to the shepherd of this archdiocese wherein he brings in the interesting topics in order to increase our devotion and love towards god and also to know the spiritual matters that concerns our faith in a very special way you are most welcome to raise to ask your questions queries and you can send them to us at archdblr@gmail.com and you will also see our mobile number in and through which you can connect with our media center our studios and the archdiocesan communication center please do write to us your feedback your opinions thank you continue to watch and continue to share with others